Speaker, sir, we heard about reforms. However, we must state, sir, that we do not have any confidence in the ability with respect to those reforms that are actually being programmed or proposed. Honorable Speaker, I remember uh, also, I think it was late back in January 2023, when the Honorable Attorney General jumped up and said, got into action, he says, any issues dealing with government affairs are to be dealt with by the coalition government and its head. Honorable Speaker, I think they're not actually being respectful to their Prime Minister. They're not listening to him. <laughs> they're not, sir. They've run amok. They're not listening to him. And I'm sure the Honorable Prime Minister, if he had some more hair on his head, would be scratching it. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, in terms, of, in terms of security and stability, sir, while the reforms announced by His Excellency may be well intentioned, I think what needs to be done. We have more of the clear cut too in your group. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> the government has to focus on the basics. The truth is, and I'm glad that we've had a very frank admission from the Minister for Home Affairs, Honorable Tikudondwa. <laughs> the truth is, Honorable Speaker, and again I relay what the general public is saying, that they don't feel safe. They don't feel safe. The security and the safety, security, safety and stability are three key drivers yeah, yeah. of the economy, sir. Yeah, yeah. They, they are those things, those things drive our economy. Yeah. And the level of lawlessness has increased dramatically. Yeah. The issue also is not just isolated with respect to the bad elements of our society. And I say this, Honorable Speaker, and I say this wholeheartedly from my heart, sir. This is not just your problem. This is our problem too. It is an us problem. Yeah. It is something that we, be, we must do yeah. together. It's not something about you know, Honorable Tikunduandu blaming the past previous government for the drug problem. We didn't ask people to come and make drugs here. None of us did. We put the necessary things into place. You're making it better. You're making it better. Fantastic. That's what we want to see. But please stop blaming the previous government for any ill wills. Because this issue regarding drugs, etc., in society is not. Again, sir, see, they don't listen. Again, this is not just a problem for Fiji. It is a problem worldwide. And we must do it jointly, together, to actually get this done. That's all we're saying. You know, he's right. He's right about the fruit, etc. You know, you're looking at it and you say, there are some good fruit, some are bad fruit. We gave you a lot of good fruit. You still haven't opened it. There are fantastic new police stations that we gave you that you still haven't opened, Honorable Prime Minister. We want to know why. Honorable Speaker, even the admission by the Honorable Minister with respect to the, the issues faced by the police force, again, I congratulate you, Honorable, uh, Honorable Minister, for actually acknowledging that. It is something that we need to do, we need to do jointly. We've had a few conversations, sir, Honorable Minister and myself, and I think we are actually find some good footing with respect to advancing the, be the be for the betterment of Fiji. Honorable Speaker, one of the most important things for him is not just doing home affairs. He has to ensure that all he does brings back investor confidence, Honorable Speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that yeah. is what is seriously lacking, Honorable Speaker. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, when, I was a, when I was a young young gentleman, sir, my father used to tell me every time we went past Lamy, he said, if you see smoke coming out from his cement factory, you know the economy is working. Guess what? There had no, been no smoke there for 14 months. Yeah, yeah. Nothing's happening. Yeah. It's just not happening. And this is not, this is not us telling you off, it is just critiquing. So please accept it. Accept it. It's not happening. Go and ask the construction people. Now I'm going to tell you, Honorable Speaker, it actually stems from incompetence. And I'll tell you where it gets worse when you move to the Ministry of Finance, Honorable Speaker. The state of the economy, Minister of Finance, is fragile. It is fragile. And unfortunately, yeah, yeah. instead of building up the economy, in his second year, he's still trying to create a new national plan. 
Paul will speak up by the time he's finished with the new national plan, it'll be election time again. Yeah. Yeah. Speak up. What are you going to do with the three-year plan? You had a perfectly... I'm not a joke. People are laughing at you and saying you're not worthy of your job. Honorable Speaker, here's a great example for you. He used to sit here, and he did for eight years. Eight years he could have developed a great plan, but he didn't, Honorable Speaker. He did nothing. Now we've got a year of nothing from the Minister of Finance. Again, disconnect. He didn't even listen to his Honorable Prime Minister when he said, don't increase VAT to that much, Honorable Speaker. That tells you about the disconnect. He finally got into the driver's seat, Honorable Speaker. He finally got into the driver's seat. But he got in, he started the car, he actually thought, great, the engine's running, but guess what? There's no wheels on it, Honorable Speaker. Because he took them off, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, what was so wrong with the five-year and 20-year development plan? Why are you wasting resources? You can tweak it, but it's not going to take, it shouldn't take you that long to do. Because guess what? When doing those development plans, our ideas are the same, Honorable Speaker. Our ideas are exactly the same. It is for the betterment of Fiji. We did not put anything in there that was going to ruin Fiji, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, he's too busy with his friends or consultants or whatever they are. And then again, you know, you need to get your mathematics right. Three year plan, again, three years, it takes, it's going to take you two and a half to get it done. By that time, what are you going to do? Nothing. Honorable Speaker, right now, the biggest complaint that we get, Honorable Speaker, from Joe Public is, sir, before I used to have some loose change in my pocket, now I don't even have that. And you ask them why, I said, that has gone up by cost of living by, is raised because that has gone up by, five, by 6%, manufacturing duty gone up by 3%, increased corporate tax by 5%. Yeah. Some have been yeah. given... Maybe, no maybe it has been safely stashed somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming to that, sir. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, that's a staggering 14% increase to businesses. But guess what, Honorable Speaker? That is being passed on to the consumers. Yeah. Let alone, Honorable Speaker, the increase in overseas markets. And I am going to give you today some live examples of what people have said and how they actually suffer it. Honourable Speaker, these policies are atrocious and misguided, Honourable Speaker. Yeah, yeah. They do not take care of yeah. our people. Our people. Yeah. These stories echo the daily struggles and, you know, we have a resilient population. We know that, sir. But this time, the resilience is wearing thin, Honourable Speaker. Absolutely. They deserve the compassion that we give them. Yeah, yeah. They deserve the urgency that we give them to look after them. Let me take you through the streets, Honourable Speaker. I've had the privilege of conversing with the best information that you can actually get from taxi drivers, Honourable Speaker. One day, I got in a pair of shorts and a T-shirt and a hat, and he didn't recognize me. And I asked him, how are you, sir? He said, good. I said, how's it going with business? He goes, very bad. I said, what's the problem? He goes, the money that I used to make, I don't. And I said, why are people not catching the taxi? He goes, all the money that everybody earns goes towards their food bill. How are they going to catch taxis, Honorable Speaker? So you, in the corridors of our pharmacies, Honorable Speaker, people who are get, getting prescribed 20 tablets are going to the pharmacies and only asking for 10, because that's all they can afford, Honorable Speaker. Our hotel workers, our hotel workers now find solace in the fact that they do not have to pay rent, and thanks to their village homes, but yet they empathize with those who actually who don't have village homes and who have to juggle the soaring costs of living with the, with the fear of the next day. Honorable Speaker, for want of a better word, I know it's been used, but it's actually very, very appropriate. The attack on the people, the common man, is actually brutal. It's really bad, Honorable Speaker. And we face it every day. We people complaining to us every day on a basically about the cost of living. Every day. 